welcome back to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional. And on this week's episode, we went to see a sequel. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Was it good? Was it bad? I don't know. You gotta watch the review. So fire up the Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. Patrick Hughes returned to direct The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, along with Ryan Reynolds, Salma Hayek, and Sam L. Jackson, all reprising their roles as Michael Bryce and Sonya and Darius Kincaid. They're joined this time, though, by Frank Grillo, who plays Bobby O'Neill, and Morgan Freeman, who plays Senior. Freeman's the best. Absolutely. Mike has been stripped of his AAA bodyguard license, and he is now struggling with the PTSD of not being a bodyguard anymore. His therapist recommends that he goes on a sabbatical, and he is not to do any bodyguarding, and he is not to use any weapons whatsoever. Only, Sonya finds Mike and asks for his help in setting Darius free from kidnappers, and that goes awire, as you can be, as can be expected, causing the three of them to get in a plot to destroy the EU's economic structure. That's it. That's, that's essentially the, the plot of the movie, guys. It's really short and simple for a sequel. You shouldn't ask much. I don't know if you were expecting much in it, but what did you think? So, while it had the the same amount of violence, I would say, as the first one with the shooting and lots of cursing, because, you know, Sam L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. And Ryan Reynolds actually says things about Sam L. Jackson's cursing. <laughs> so, yeah, he was tame in this one. Ryan Reynolds? Mm-hmm. Well, I think maybe because he was, like, on that sabbatical and he was supposed to be calmer. Yeah, so. Salma Hayek took the cake when it came to cursing. With the dirty mouth? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she definitely took the cake. And then, of course, in this one, we got a great treat. We got Morgan Freeman. I mean, come on. (laughs) Doesn't get any better than that, right? So that being said, with that cast, I wanted to like it more. Honestly, for me, it fell a little short because it primarily focused on Salma Hayek. I'm not a big fan. What? I'm not. I never have been. I just, I think her acting's eh. Yeah, true. I don't think that she can hold a movie on her own. And unfortunately, that's kind of what they tried to do with this. Obviously, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. So they really did focus a lot on her role. And I mean, all she really did was scream and curse a lot. Yeah. That's not enough to hold a movie for me. You know what it is? I think they went too stereotypical with that type of character. Not saying it's her character, her uh, her race. Yeah, they went they, were, they went with the Spanish background and they, you know... Really played into that. They really played into it. They had her cursing in Spanish really, really fast. And, of course, I had no idea what she was saying. But I, I, I believe the same thing. They That's what they played off of and it just didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree there. Now, it's essentially a buddy cop film. Yeah. But it's with a hitman and a bodyguard. Mm-hmm. And if you liked Hot Fuzz and you liked Rush Hour 3, you're going to like this film. Mm-hmm. I think, personally, it's a step down from Rush Hour 3, yeah. which is not that great anyway. Yeah. So this seemed to be like a really a cash grab because you threw the three characters in there you Mm -hmm. threw some more characters in there great characters yeah i mean the cast really was a good cast i love frank grillo we've seen him in a lot of movies he never usually disappoints he didn't disappoint in this role i think he played the part he was supposed to i want to see a a new frank grillo movie i'm gonna go watch boss level that was amazing it was really good watch it later tonight (laughs) yeah and then of course you know you have morgan freeman and 
I, I think if he just opens his mouth and speaks, he's already done what he needs to do. <laughs> we all know we love to listen to Morgan Freeman talk. <laughs> yeah, for me, the story kind of seemed a little recycled. There seemed to be scenes that were kind of recycled in this movie mm-hmm. as well, especially chase scenes and stuff like that. So it was a lot of rehashing of things yeah, that we've seen in other they, movies. They just kind of use the same things they they did they recycled things from other movies and even from their own first movie i think they kind of took a couple of things that had already been done and and redid it yeah now will i watch it again i'm gonna watch it again i i don't know how soon i only just watched the first one again for the second time since seeing it in the theaters since it came out i think we watched it once afterwards and Mm -hmm. This is the first one that I watched it in over a year. Yeah, it's not one that... I don't think either one of them is something that it would just be like a consistent watch where we would make it a tradition or anything like that. It's If it happens to just be one of those nights, we're like, yeah, kind of want to watch that. Not that we would never watch either one of them again. We would. And uh, do we own the first one? Yeah. Yeah, and we'll buy the second one to have it in the collection. Yeah, I think the first movie when it released, it kind of took everybody by surprise. But there was nothing out against it at the time, so I don't mm-hmm. know what the expect expectations were with the first one. Mm-hmm. But it did very well, and that right away prompted, "Oh, we got to make a sequel." It made money. You don't yeah. always have to make a sequel when something makes money, and this is a prime example of yes. that. Yes, yeah, it didn't need a sequel. Mm-hmm. I don't think I really, I loved the first one, and I probably would go back and watch the first one without watching the second one. I I don't think that. A second one was needed in this mm-hmm. case. I really don't. I think the first one held up on its own. Uh, so what are you going to rate this one? I'm going to give it a C+. Plus. C plus? You're not giving it a whole letter grade because Ryan Reynolds is in it? He didn't take a shirt off. <sighs> Neither did Frank Grillo. No, I'm going to give it a C plus, And I would have graded it lower if it weren't for the some of the actors that I really love being in it. I'm going to give it a C minus because I could really do without this movie and I hope it doesn't get another film. Let's leave this one alone. Let these actors go do other things. Why do I have a feeling that we're going to get a third one though? Yeah, I think so too. But uh, again, like I said, you like Hot Fuzz and you like, and Hot Fuzz is the bar for me, honestly. So, you know, when I say if you like Hot Fuzz, you're going to like this movie. Don't expect to get a Hot Fuzz movie. Expect to get a lower grade film of Rush Hour 3. So Mm -hmm. I think if we get a third part of this, it's going to be even worse than what we see now. Yeah. I'll see it in the theaters because it is that cast, but. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, you know, we always have to have movies to watch, so. (laughs) Yeah. It stinks when you go to the movie theaters and you look at the board and there's everything on the board that you've seen. (laughs) Anyway, so guys, this is an exciting week that's coming up on Monday, the 21st, Five Things Season 1 debuts. If you haven't seen the trailer, go check out the trailer on our channel. We're putting a we're putting a bunch of cut scenes that we have from the shows cuz there was just too much to talk about. Those are getting released this week, so go check that out. If you like the reviews, if you've seen this movie, let us know what you think. What do you compare it to? Is it like Rush Hour 3? Is it like another film that you've seen that's a buddy cop film? And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel so you know what's coming out on movie reviews and new shows that are coming. Because we have a bunch of new shows that are coming. And uh, click that notification bell. Until the next. See you later. See ya.